Well, good morning, folks. Welcome back to another video. Um, hope you've been well. So, getting a bit of deja vu at this point somewhere. Um, right, another adventure, here we come. So, this week, or this adventure I should say, is going to take me from Inverness all the way right down to Fort William. And as, of course it's called the Great Glen Way. A brilliant and beautiful, stunning piece of scenery as you pass through the 73 miles of Scottish Highlands all the way down to Fort William. So, this is going to be a great three day wild camping adventure. So, please join me as I take you camping on the wild side. It's not the most um, romantic kind of send off for the Great Glen Way. You either start here or you either finish here. Um, normally it would be inside the castle there, but because they're doing works, well, this is my alternative. And such a busy road section for a lot of people traveling past. And traffic lights. <laughs> so, um, join me as I take you camping, wild camping on this adventure through the Great Glen Way, which is such a beautiful place. And I don't, I've not done it before, so this is a new thing for me. Um, and looking forward to it. Bikes all sorted. Just had a new set of tyres. Um, especially put on for the Great Glen Way cycle. So thank you very much to the bikes of Inverness for putting them on for me and giving it a little going over should we say um, yes so excited to do this little adventure and let's get going surprisingly quite a tough little section and majority of it I've had to push the bike uphill it's very stony so it's loose stones so it makes it very difficult and it doesn't help having the, the backpacks on adding the weight so it's very slippy for the bike to get traction but we're onto the road and we're going on to the next little section so hopefully this will get a little bit better okay we've come up onto the higher ground here most of that is pretty steep. Probably not bad for walking and just a general bike use, but because I'm bike packing and got some pretty heavy weight in the back of this bike, it is a struggle. I'm not going to lie about that. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to take five minutes here. What a beautiful bit of scenery. The whole of, well, a good chunk of Inverness anyway. It was a bit of a faff trying to find the path here. Um, I did come in, in, in the grassy fields and things and then hit another housing scheme and probably wasn't signposted the best, to be honest. So I was up and down streets just not even knowing. Um, it's all been built since I put these OS maps 
since West maps have been put on, so it it technically wasn't. It was probably about five minutes out my journey. Not not a lot, but it was not clearly signposted for my liking. Maybe, or maybe that was just me not paying attention. But we're up into the woods and bracken and path better paths now. So a cracking view. The path's now opened up a little bit and a little bit flatter so I can actually breathe and relax a little bit into this walk or cycle, I should say. A beautiful, thick gorse, broom, woodland with pine trees and a mixed woodland, I should say. Very peaceful, very uh, quiet, and you just hear the birds twittering away there, which is so nice. woodland after that hard struggle just to push the bike up the first I'm going to say let's let's deal with a mile to come through woodlands and then got into a, like a decent path this is very peaceful and the people that I have passed now and again it's just that there's a very calming feeling just riding through this wood sun's creeping through again, it's starting to come out and just makes things very, very peaceful and relaxing. I feel like I don't even want to talk because I'm breaking the silence here, I'm just... It's so lovely. Uh, so I'm just going to have a stop, I'm just going to have a little five minutes some water and some fruit pastels or something just to just to have a bite. But yeah, sit and enjoy this peace and quiet. So I just passed this little bench and had my name written on it <laughs> just for some lunch. So I thought it'd be a good stop just to actually have a couple of rolls and some water. Sun shining on my back, shade and what an absolute stunning woodland this is. I'm loving it.
Okay folks, I've just come across this little campsite, met a couple of a wee bit back there um, and they said there's a wee, camp, a wee campsite plus there's a little tea room cafe here and I've popped down and got the most absolutely beautiful, it's like Alice in Wonderland walking through the wee woodland up to this cafe, put your order in and they bring it to your table and it's absolutely stunning I mean it's the, the heat here is incredible I've got a pot of tea and a bit of cake and it's absolutely fantastic the setting is so peaceful in the woodlands here to bring it to you on the bench and there's my pot of tea and my cake and uh, Oh, this is just glorious. Absolutely glorious. This is just fantastic. What a brilliant idea. It's having a tea room in a open woodland. It's so peaceful and it's just very relaxing. Just, it's a must visit if you're doing the Great Glen Way. <laughs> it's a very eco. Setting. And it works perfect. Absolutely fantastic. Hats off to them. You've got no worries or no, everything's relaxed and calm here. So oh, there we go folks, that was a Briachan campsite and cafe, eco cafe and campsite. Look them up on social media or I'll put a link in the description below. Absolutely fantastic and oh, if you're looking for a la relaxing setting to have a coffee and a bit of cake or something, oh, I cannot believe how relaxed I am sitting there. It was lovely. Um, so big thank you to them. Um, eco toilets as well and all that stuff. So if that's your kind of thing, if not and you never tried it, well, pop along. <laughs> um, such a nice setting. And the recycle out is just absolutely stunning. Now that we've been filled with tea and cake, <laughs> we'll get on our little journey with this glorious sunshine. So after that little cafe there, just been coming through nice little pinewood forest track and it actually opens up into a 
<clears throat> a nice big community woodland and eventually onto this big forestry track and since leaving that little coffee shop I've seen two people that's a good couple of miles away um, so it's absolutely brilliant for the bike I'm carrying two big packs here so if you're just coming up for the day or a short time to do a stretch of this Great Glen Way this road from Inverness to um, I'm just about to come down to Drum the Drocket shortly but it's absolutely fantastic uh, it's just really good riding so if you've got kids or you get you get pestered by nobody there's no traffic or anything here so it's a really good ride um but yes it's nice nice and free there's a breeze sun's still out and i'm just cycling away easy wasy listening to all these birds and they're everywhere was quite a thrilling and lovely track to cycle down a bit bumpy but I've got the back panniers on the back in the bag so it does make it a little bit a little bit unsteady but um, what a lovely cycle through there and there's a little vantage viewpoint here so I've come down here and this is absolutely amazing a little bench to have a view Oh, what? This is absolutely gorgeous. This view alone will make you want to come and do the Great Glen Way. Whether you walk it or cycle it, this view is a must see. Okay folks, I kind of just, I've got 13 kilometres to go before my sort of camp that I predicted I would get to but I'm just going to cut it short because it's a nice evening, it's cooling down, the sun's setting a little bit around the corner there and I've just come down a little track and I'm going to just kind of pitch my tent at the side of this verge here. I'm in no rush to get to where I'm supposed to be. Um, it's just a guide mark of where I thought how many miles I could do. And it's a, it's a it's an open three day camp, so it is a wild camp and I thought this is such a lovely setting. Why not? So I'm gonna set up camp here, get some food into me, um, get what I need to do and just enjoy this relaxing camp. So peaceful. And I'm loving it. So I just need to go back a couple of hundred yards up the, the track and rejoin where I'm going and then downhill and along the road a bit. 
and I think it's back up through the woods. So it's a bit up and down here, isn't it? That's <laughs> the way it is. But uh, there is odd midges about, and if I get the tent up, get some food in me, and a warm cup of tea or something, um, it'll be half the battle, for sure. Okay, tent's all up. It's a really cushioned floor with all the moss on it, so... Uh, <laughs> hopefully I get a good sleep. So we're in this beautiful woodland just above Drum the Drocket. I can see Loch Ness water shimmering through the trees there, which is amazing. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Just a little tease, that's what it is. With backpacking. Um, as in like the, the bike packing, you have a little bit of luxury because you have a little bit of space where you can put things that you can have a little treat. So, um, I bought eggs for the first time yesterday and I boiled them all up this morning. I had three for my breakfast. I've got three boiled up ready for tomorrow breakfast along with a wee bit of drink and a banana as well. For tonight's dinner, Managed to just go and get some cheesy pasta. <laughs> Total luxury. It's not what I never ever take this at all. So the main fact is you need milk. So this is a luxury as well. Very rarely do I carry milk unless I'm just going away for one night. So I'm going to use this because I need it for the pasta and I'll have a proper cup of tea as well. So all good there. So that's my dinner. I'm going to get it on in the next five minutes. Um, there is midges, they're bearable, the odd ones are nipping away there as usual. Uh, I've got plenty of water and I thought an ideal stop, I was supposed to stop 13 kilometres further on and technically I've looked at it and I thought well if I use water here I can refill and drum the rocket somewhere which is like a bonus so the next stop's just around about Fort Augustus. So it's a nice little, nice little hop. If, if you say so, yeah, everyth everything's actually fine. Such a quiet little spot and looking forward to my evening. It's just nice and relaxed when you feel that there's no pressure and it's totally different doing it bikepacking because you can just, you don't have any commitments like a hostel or anything or a campsite or anything that you've booked onto. So... A nice little wood woodland grassy path like this is just perfect. And my tent blends in with all the trees and all that, you know, so I'm kind of like camouflaged. Yeah. But yeah, this is all good. Um, I can get a proper cup of tea and a pasta and a little bit of... A little treat with sweets. So... All good. Anyway. Dinner time. time I had this cheesy pasta but anyway um, it's something different and it's a wee bit of a luxury that what I would normally have but if you've got the room for it for one night if it was any if I was going any further distance I probably wouldn't have bought it but um, I knew I was having it tonight anyway so I can quite easily eat it and get rid of the packaging. Oh, this is just good. Mm. So this is, I mean, that's a 
that's a big one. It's up to about here. It's up to about there of pasta. So it's actually quite a quite a nice meal. Today isn't technically over. I hope, well, me personally, I've had a, an amazing day. What a lovely cycle this is. Yes, from Inverness, about a mile out, as I said, it's technically a bit hard going if you have bike packs on the back, banners and uh, backpacks. But that's why I had to push it. But once you get to the top, it starts levelling out a little bit and then you go into the wood and you see that the wood is actually amazing. It's very good to cycle on. And that's coming from me that's already got a substantial weight on my bike already. Then we're driving into like forestry and then on a road for a couple of miles. And then you take a, a right into this little wooded area where we went for a coffee and a bit of cake and that beautiful <laughs> eco, eco campsite coffee house. Oh, it was lovely. Can't get over that, so that'll stick with me. Then, obviously cycling through the forestry track, the road. Um, yes, a bit stony and gritty, and but that's forestry for you. Um, coming into this woodland, there was some pretty steep bits, so I did have to walk it down. Um, quite rutty in some bits, there's like tree roots and stones, so I technically can't ride that like that. You know, it's not built for the pannier bags and everything for that style of riding. Um, and seen this little shortcut through, nice grass area, and just thought a nice little camping spot would be fine. Chill out, make it nice and relaxed. So technically, it's actually been such a nice day. The weather's been great. It's a nice breeze, keeping most of these midges away. I know there's a few there now, but keeping most of them away. Um, so yeah, if, it's, if you've never done the Great Glen Way, like I have, <laughs> I haven't done it either, um, it's definitely worth exploring. And even good on foot. If you're backpacking, Get the, get the map, there is a proper walkway and following the signs. Um, and it's worth exploring. So, if it's something that you quite fancy doing, I'll put some links in the description for you. I'll put as many links as I can to the area. Um, along with some of the kit that I've got, if you want to check, so, uh, check out that. Yeah. I haven't had a fault with any of my kit there. I'm technically still carrying a wounded tent. The pole did snap when I did the North Coast 500 and this is just a little add-on extra from doing that. Um, but the pole split and I'll put a little picture on it of it there and I managed to hammer it kind of shut again and then taped it, and then cable tied it, which is holding up touch wood. But I only need another two days out of it, and then we'll get it sorted. But apart from that, I can't fault anything else. Um, the new tyres are doing grand. They're they're great for what I've done so far. So yeah, all in all, such a lovely little cycle. An amazing place and you get some cracking views of Loch Ness and there'll be even better ones along the road there um, so it's definitely worth if you plan planning on looking for an adventure 73 between 73 and 80 miles or something like that give or take the paths you take um, of the Great Glen Way plenty of books on it plenty of info and um, yeah if you want to come up and explore it, well, please do. Or, if you've already done it, how did you find it yourself? Did you walk? Did you backpack? Did you hostel? Do you, I'd love to hear 
how, fo how folk actually have done it. And uh, did you manage all right? What did you think of the scenery? Chuck in a little comment. Um, so if you're new to this channel, um, my name's Steve and as part of my life, I run Camping on the Wild Side and it's basically going to different places, remote or something like that and showing you how I camp and bits of Scotland and sunsets and sunrises and all the wee, all the wee nice bits in between. Um, and hopefully you might want to visit Scotland or visit some of these parts that I go to. So it's it's all good. I love meeting people. I love finding out about who goes where and all the things that go for, for camping. So it's great it's fun. These midges are becoming a little bit annoying. So I'm going to get stuck into this, finish it off, wash the pot, get a cup of tea with some real milk. Sounds like a good plan to me. just sitting out here peacefully with a cup of tea just listening and watching and I heard a screeching so I don't know technically what it was I, I really think it was two pine martens it was just a flash of black so it wasn't red squirrels because they're sort of more lighter colour anyway but um <coughs> That was about 20 minutes ago. I haven't seen them since, so I don't know what's... I've just been walking up and down very quietly and just listening, but can't hear a thing. I think that's the best, best thing to do, is just sit nice and quietly with a cup of tea. Just listen. The birds will tell you exactly what's going on. There isn't a peep. There's very little bird noise as well, so things are settling down. Um, so, I've had my cup of tea, the midges are actually quite calm at the moment, it's just, it's just odd ones that are faffing about. So, I'm going to call it a night, I'm just going to get into my sleeping bag and this peace and quiet might actually help. But, uh, yeah, sounds like a good plan to get in my bed. I could do with it. So, on that note, join me tomorrow. <laughs> See what tomorrow brings. But anyway, I shall leave it here. See you in the morning, folks. Night for now.